The focus of this discussion is in how mobsters use multimedia platforms to manufacture and distribute their illicit products, or the type of addictions related to the overindulgence of substances like alcohol, caffeine, cigarettes, and activities like gambling, gaming, and even porn. I would like to illustrate how modern-day content creators can become very much like street peddlers in gathering their materials and distributing their products. Their efforts in their presentations revolve around public relations, marketing, and believe it or not, corporate level persuasions and deceptions. In other words, modern day content creators can become very much like street peddlers, and there are some commonalities. And on a side note, some of the things I'll be mentioning that my fellow content creators may be doing, I may be doing as well. Does this make me a hypocrite or a self-destructing observer? Welcome to Four C's One Family. The goal of any content creator is to remain relevant enough to keep an audience interested or hooked on a particular topic or product. Now, before we continue, let's briefly distinguish the differences between a content creator and an influencer. They both focus on creating a connection between themselves and their audience. Now, however, here I will refer to them both as content creators because they aren't mutually exclusive, but there are some overlaps in how they brand or market themselves. Content creators focus on posts or live streams around ideas, and influencers are incentivized through sponsorships to promote a product or service. Now, with this in mind, content creators may be at least partly responsible for causing certain modern day habits and behaviors to become addictions and expanded to encompass activities considered essential or indispensable to specific segments of our population. Well-known and influential content creators have built networks that have departmentalized how they collect and produce information for their audience on their preferred platform, or in some cases, preferred platforms. And if you are unfortunate enough to be competing for the attention of the demographic they influence, it may be almost impossible for you to compete and get your voice heard. It's even feasible to say that several headline content creators have become leaders of multimedia congregations with followers numbering in the hundreds of thousands and in a few cases, millions of subscribers. Charismatic and persuasive content creators effectively generate awareness of a product or formulate a novel topic for a discussion that illustrates the concerns and beliefs of their target audience that they know will most likely entice positive responses. Several well-known and long-lasting content creators have the uncanny ability to generate responses from their audience about concerns they never knew existed, while at the same time supplying what appears to be reasonable solutions to solve a shared or perceived problem. Some content creators' popularity may be why their subscribers believe that they have available resources to influence local and national policy decision makers. Now, so far, this sounds like magic. However, the reality is, this is far from the truth. As of this recording, there are more than 5 billion internet users, which equals to over 64% of the global population. And the average social media user spends nearly 150 minutes per day online. However, out of this large number of internet users, only 1% are consistently active in online discussion groups. In comparison, the remaining 99% referred to as lurkers are nonverbal consumers of posted and paywalled content. Now, when followers or subscribers feel that they can't get their voices heard and later discover a presenter who articulates their fears and concerns, they become intrigued and motivate to partake in discussion groups and even meetups. This is precisely when followers and subscribers are more likely to share a product or service a presenter promotes and become more than willing to express their likes and dislikes. 
Some subscribers may become passionate or fanatically enough to follow their favorite content creator or presenter to the end of nowhere. Many content creators try to create and produce consistently to nurture this behavior. Now, the question is, how do content creators use their influence to generate and heighten their profit potential? Content creators had to learn to overcome many obstacles to get their messages out. Some mastered the skills to title their online presentations in ways that entice people to click on their videos and links. And some have even manufactured online personas that assist them in presenting products and services. Most have aligned with commercial retailers to promote or sell products. Content creators earn a percentage of any profits made if their subscribers purchase an item from the supplied links. Now, suppose the content creator has his or her own product to sell and subscribers purchase an item from their supplied links or become a one-time or annual supporter through platforms like Patreon. The content creator earns a percentage of the profit or money donated. The content creator would then absorb a much higher profit rate without worrying about what percentage to pay to others. Hidden deep within the minds of content creators who are solely profit motivated, there is a voice that consistently reminds them that they must continue introducing attractive sources of information, products, and services to those they influence. So it's easy to see why some content creators are stimulating their audience's interests. Yet, this has become the reason why some content creators have been accused of intentionally misdirecting their followers and subscribers by hyperbolically fueling their audience's apprehensions, insecurities, fears, and in some cases, prejudices. Now, what I mean by this is that some content creators know what they are doing and refuse to pay attention to the harmful misrepresentations, false narratives, and lies in their presentations. And some prefer to do so for financial, religious, political, ideological reasons, or a combination of them all. Now, I don't want to make it sound like most content creators only care about monetary gains. Too many of them, or I should say too many of us, want to present content to help people and get them to think in a constructive and positive way. Many content creators do what they can do the best way they can with the resources they have available to them, and they should be supported. But we must not become blind to those who have tarnished what good content creators have done and are still doing today. I hope we are all aware that with great power, comes great responsibility. The internet has become a multimedia marketing landscape with very few rules. We now live in an attention-focused society that has become less patient and, in some cases, less accepting. And due to sophisticated algorithms using artificial intelligence nonstop 24 hours a day to break down and outpace our ability to monitor, filter, and self-regulate ourselves, the internet has become a digital marketing battleground. Large corporations with unlimited capital, technical control, and political backing are on the other side of our computer and cell phone screens. In their effort to protect their virtual real estate, several content creators have broken the law and gone to jail for promoting products and services they knew were unethical or downright illegal. And sadly, a few have been involved in more heinous crimes that went beyond just scamming and led to murder. The big question now is, what can we or should we do at this point in time? To prevent social media addiction from taking over the minds of their especially young population, some nations have implemented rules and regulations that people from Western countries would call draconian. I would dare say that a bit of this draconian therapy may be the remedy the Western world may need to take to alleviate and eliminate the negative after effects of social media addiction. The truth hurts, and medicine usually leaves a bad taste. We must get the word out to those who are susceptible to social media addiction. 
and show them how they can detect and combat the hidden narratives and subversive messaging promoted within the words of their favorite content creators, who may have nefarious motives and support from entities and nations that are determined to corrupt the minds of their competitors and enemies. If you have found what we have to offer of any value, please click on the subscribe and bell buttons below to keep up to date with our current episodes. And if you're listening to our podcast, please subscribe and help us spread the word that we have a lot more in common than we think. We were interested to hear what you have to say. For Four Seas One Family, I'm James Thomas in Taipei, Taiwan. And remember to stay strong, safe, and healthy wherever you are in the world.